Hey guys, and welcome to episode 32 of Upfront Gaming News, um, where we cover basically what's been going on um, in the gaming community for the week. Um, essentially, sorry, I'm trying to fix my hood here, it's all messed up. Um, essentially, this week we start to go back into our regular programming where we have a trailer and a lot of information coming from each one of the prime console um, companies. At the same time, um, we have additional info uh, being added for now um, from Stadia. And so we're finally going back into the regular program. And um, I don't know, Stadia may fall off eventually. We just don't know kind of where that's going to go at this point. Um, but we'll get to that. Anyway, um, let's jump into it. So starting with PlayStation, as usual, um, we have the trailer for Terminator Resistance. So go ahead and check this out. termination. Are you alright, Jacob? We intercepted some interesting data. It turns out you're part of a prestigious group. A group of people that Skynet marked for termination. ATA aerial flying by. You need to find a way to get out of there. I want you to take a team of my soldiers and fight your way to Skynet's defense grid. Watch out! More of them up here! It has to end tonight. Okay, guys, that was the trailer for... Terminator Resistance, and now we'll jump into PlayStation News, which is quite a bit this week. It is going to make our video a little bit longer, but we've had a couple short ones the last couple weeks, so um, hopefully at the very least you enjoy it and can take in this information. Um, let's start with uh, January's PlayStation Plus game releases. They had been announced. Um, that's Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection, and Goat Simulator. Uh, for those that don't know, the Nathan Drake Collection actually includes three games. Uh, it's Drake's Fortune, Among Thieves, and Drake's Deception for a total of four games for January. Um, and I don't know about you, but the Uncharted series was actually really great. I actually kind of passed on the last one um, until now. I kind of got it for Christmas, so now I want to go back and look at like my trophies for the first three and then replay them and then get into the one that I just received um, just to get through all of them. Uh, anyway, moving on. 12 predictions for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in 2020. Um, I'm interested to know what you think of these predictions and I would love to um, see something in the comments and, uh, you know, just kind of see if any of these kind of uh, ring true to you or, you know, you see as might be problems. Um, so this is all coming from the staff over at Push Square. Um, and this is what they have to say with their 12 predictions. Uh, number one being the introduction of a universal PS4, PS5 software upgrade initiative. Um, basically with PlayStation wanting to transition players as quickly as possible um, through backwards compatibility with PS4 and PS5, um, this could prove to be effective for service games like Destiny 2 and Rainbow Six Siege. In essence, they would um, basically port those games up 
in a way to perform a little bit better on PS5 and then continue on their model as well um, in order to make that transition flawless. Um, seems like a good idea, however, I'm of the opinion that if I'm going to play games going into a new generation, um, I'm trying to get through all my last generation games and move into the new generation games. So for me, the backwards compatibility is great because I can get rid of my PS4 and my PS5, and then I can actually just go ahead and get through my PS4 titles that I'm still working on on my PS5 and then just kind of leave it behind. You know what I mean? Um, but that's just me. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't more PS4 titles that might come out that might ring ear for a minute and I might want to play, but the good thing is I would still be able to play it on the PS5. So that's great. Um, number two, The Last of Us 2 will be good, but not great. Um, due to the hype surrounding it, it might not be able to live up to the expectation as The Last of Us was unexpectedly the genre definer. Um, it has a massive weight as The Last of Us Part 2 to be a 10 out of 10 game, which is 100% true. I think that um, I'm hoping it doesn't fall short because The Last of Us did a great job. Um, but there's that possibility there that something just doesn't ring um, as well as the original. So we'll see. Um, number three, Remedy announcing a Sony published exclusive at the PS5 reveal event. Um, due to the prowess of both companies, it kind of makes sense that they would come together and uh, create a publishing deal. And it'd be something to look forward to if you played any of Remedy's games. Um, they're great uh, titles as is, and they stand on their own. So it, them doing a, a deal with Sony would be huge. Um, number four, Cyberpunk 2077 will piss a lot of people off. I tend to agree with this one. Um, the internet will become ablaze with people that haven't played the game making comments about one scene or another that they've heard about or spouting countless poorly researched opinion pieces. Um, this happens all the time. You'll have a scene in the game that somebody wants to leave a comment on or say something about because they saw it and they haven't been through the game. They haven't played the game, so they don't know the full context of the scene that they're looking at. Um, it's a lot like um, people that pull out their phones during uh, a fight or the end of a scene and you don't know what happened before it to transpire that scene, you just kind of guess. Um, so that very likely is going to uh, be very, very true once Cyberpunk 2077 releases. However, agree or disagree with me in the comments and we'll talk about it. Um, Number five, our first real look at the first party PS5 game will be mind-blowing. Um, I agree with this as well because the PS5's power being well above the PS4, uh, we will more than likely be blown away by what we see when Sony does it, what Sony does with their exclusives. Their exclusives are always pretty top-notch um, for the most part, and that being said, this added power is going to be something that Sony, once they release a first party exclusive to be seen, it's going to be a massive, massive, um, let's see, uh, it's, it's just going to be very, very visually stimulating as well as hopefully a very ingrained story that we can all follow along with. Um, all right, so number six, Deep Down will finally return in some form. The dungeon-delving fantasy title that was teased by Capcom back when the PS4 launched will reappear in 2020. Um, this would be a large surprise from a great developer in 2020. I tend to agree. However, there is the fact that it may not be Deep Down. It may be um, a elements of Deep Down that are turned into a different title. Um, 
So there's that. Uh, number seven, PS5 will launch on the 20th of November for $399. Uh, the 20th date in 2020 makes sense as the company would potentially not be able to resist the extra 20 to th put in there. As for the price, they could launch higher, but they could surprise people. This would definitely draw more people to the console and put them in the forefront or in the front position going into the next generation of consoles if PlayStation decides to initially um, take the hit on the sale. Um... Number 8, Beyond Good and Evil 2 will show up at E3 2020 as a next-gen game, but will not, still not get a firm date. The game has been elusive for a few years, we all know that, and what has been seen has been ambitious, which that would be allowed in the PlayStation 5 era in a better way. So, probably won't see a release date for a while, that makes sense. Um, I just wish they wouldn't take so long. Um, number nine, Sony will formally announce Horizon Zero Dawn 2 at the PS5 reveal event, but we won't see it. Um, what they're saying is a sequel is almost guaranteed, but a small teaser may be all that's seen. Sony could get away with this with very little and drive PS5 sales in a positive way because a lot of people were very engaged with Horizon Zero Dawn. The game itself, as you played through and got through the game story and Frozen Wilds, it was a great title. Once you got to the end and started grinding toward all of the miscellaneous crap that you had to find, it got mundane and kind of repetitive, which sucked. Um, but it is what it is, and that's how some games can be. It just, um, I think they, if... They could make an improvement on Horizon Zero Dawn 2 um, to make those sort of grinding just to get little things for trophies go away. Um, but then again, that's in a lot of games these days, so it probably won't happen. Um, anyway, so that's, that's something we're bound to see with PS5. Number 10, Square Enix announces Final Fantasy 16 at E3 2020. Um, this may be a trailer shortly after Final Fantasy VII Remake's release, um, being that E3 is only three months after the remake releases, um, to salivate the next installment that may not be seen for a couple of years. Now, um, it's... Basically, we know Square Enix to do this release info way ahead of when they need to in order to sell a game. Um, so for them to put out a teaser trailer for Final Fantasy 16 this coming year and then not release till 2022 is not out of the ordinary for Square Enix. They have several RPG titles um, that are great games and I think that this uh, could very well be the case. But we'll see you come E3. Um, number 11, PS Plus is going to come to PS5 but it's going to offer one free game and uh, that's going to be per month at launch. This will actually be one PS5 game um, that, but you can play your two PS4 titles on the uh, PS5 as well. So in actuality you can end up with three games, but this makes a lot of sense because of the fact that you're going to be able to play the PS4 titles but the PS5 titles in the beginning are going to be a little light um, just because it's a new system. There's a lot of development going on in the background that we haven't seen. However, um, for PlayStation to go ahead and give away two games a month when they're not really up to a level where they may have enough being sold um, to validate that extra title every month. You may see them do something different uh, based on how much is in development, but we don't know. Um, and then finally, number 12, the next Assassin's Creed title is going to be revealed at E3. We've already seen some teasers for Assassin's Creed Ragnarok, um, but it's not scheduled to release until next year. 
Now, I'm not talking about Ragnarok because there's no telling that that's going to be the PS4, PS5 title that we're talking about here. Um, but we'll get something at E3 and then it'll be scheduled to release next year. And the reason is that Ubisoft has a large amount of games planned currently and it would make sense that they would push the next Assassin's Creed to be released after Gods and Monsters and Watchdog Legion, which are also PS5 launch titles. So that being said, those are the 12 uh, predictions for 2020 when it comes to PlayStation and PlayStation 5. Uh, well, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I don't do any edits in these videos, so if you notice a mistake, yeah, I'd leave it. I don't really care. Um, it happens. Um, but all right, so that's it for PlayStation. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to discuss some of these because they're really impactful. Um, but anyway, moving on to Xbox. Xbox's uh, trailer for the week is a game called Invert that releases on January 8th. Go ahead and check it out. Alright guys, so that was the invert that um, releases January 8th on Xbox. Um, some short news for the rest of our um, consoles this week. So we've got uh, Game Pass has added Grand Theft Auto V uh, to Xbox. Honestly, I am so over hearing about Grand Theft Auto V. Um, Rockstar does a really great job of uh, keeping their games relevant. I will say that much. There's always new things coming out on the online side of all their games. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a bunch of stuff um, that's been out as it continues. I mean, there's new heists, new um, new captures, new bounties, and like all of this, which is great. Um, it is a great game. They both are. Um, but at what point are we going to hear about the next one? Uh, there's been a couple of little rumors about Grand Theft Auto 6, um, but we haven't really heard anything concrete from Rockstar in reference to Grand Theft Auto 6 in the future. And if it does release, it's going to come out on the new platforms um, in November or December time frame. So uh, finally for Xbox, uh, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighbor Neighborville has a festival event called Snow Day, uh, complete with snow drifts, a snow day prize map, prize bulbs, epic hats, victory slabs, punchers, emojis, and more. Um, earning prize bulbs is as easy as earning XP as you play any mode. Um, there are two additional festivals coming in February and March that also will have a bunch of... Um, extra things that you can earn in game so uh, look out for those going forward that's it for xbox let's move into nintendo uh, there's no actual release uh, on nintendo switch until the 21st of january so we're not even going to have um, a trailer for them next week either um, but moving into their news uh, saber interactive is working hard on an update for the Witcher 3 on Switch. Um, this is the company that essentially ported it over to Switch, if I read that correctly. Um, no details have been released other than it's a minor update. Um, so if you're playing the Witcher 3 on Switch, by all means, look out for that. Um, finally, God of War's art director is now designing incredibly realistic Star Fox characters. Um, he's decided at the beginning of the year that drawing Star Fox 
Star Fox characters um, was a good idea. His rendering of Fox McCloud, um, it looks great. And I mean, it's amazing. I wonder if like he'd be porting any of these into a new uh, Star Fox game, because that'd be really cool. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, he's definitely working on these. He has stated that he will render Wolf last. So, um, by all means, if you want to check that out, um, look him up and, and look at his Instagram because that's where they're popping up. All right. Uh, that's it for Nintendo. Now, finally moving into Stadia, um, Stadia has a couple good bits of news. Uh, this month, however, we're still awaiting something that sets Stadia apart. Um, there was a statement that's, that said that the Destiny 2 players on Stadia have cut in half since Stadia's release, um, which, I mean, it's Destiny 2. It is an older game, but um, that could mean that you know people have kind of seen a bad side of it and just kind of given it up. Who knows? Um, all right, so for Stadia, 2020 improvements are going to include more mobile controller support, uh, bringing chat and response to mobile devices as it's currently not available on mobile devices, um, improvement of web play, uh, support for more Android devices and iOS, um, Android TV support, in-game Google Assistant um, has very limited capabilities. Um, so they're going to be improving that. The Stadia store needs to improve. You really can't search it and it's accessible from your phone or tablet. However, um, like getting into it and looking for something specific can be kind of a pain. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then also parental controls on the store itself. Um, more countries as it's currently available in 14 countries. And the base model versus Pro, um, at this point, obviously, if you want to get into Google Stadia, again, it's still in beta. People are like, well, it should have stayed in beta. It is in beta. Um, you buy the ability to play it on your TV right now um, as part of that beta. And then you have 999 Pro subscription that goes with it that gets you more out of what you need. Um, or what you would want, I should say, um, because it's more titles per month. It's it's your own your tag is guaranteed, etc. Um, so there's all that, uh, and then the base model is going to be nine ninety nine. You can play it off of whatever, just buy games, and not worry about buying anything that's related to a console type setup. Um, all right. And finally for Stadia, games coming to Stadia in 2020 include the following. So re-releases are going to include The Crew 2, Doom, The Elder Scrolls Online, Super Hot, and The Division 2. Timed exclusives are going to be Get Packed, Orcs Must Die 3, and Spitlings. New releases that are Stadia, Stadia titles, now I say that loosely because they're going to be new as in they're coming out but they're not exclusive to stadia um they're going to include baldur's gate 3 cyberpunk 2077 destroy all humans doom eternal gods and monsters marvel's marvel's avengers uh, monster energy supercross 3 watchdog legions and windjammers 2. so that's all coming for stadia in the near future um, as I've said before in previous videos, I own a Stadia as one of the founders. Uh, I've played it. I only play the free games right now because it's yet to prove to me that it's going to be worth me dumping anything additional into it. Um, so there's that. Um, anyway, uh, it is proven to at least work for what they say it is. However, there are little pieces here and there that are kind of annoying, and we've dealt with that in other videos. Um, that's it for this week, guys. So, um, by all means, um, like, comment, subscribe, share, and leave those comments in reference to anything in the video below so that we can go ahead and discuss further on 
things that are in this video. And I look forward to you seeing you next week. Welcome to the new year. Uh, happy 2020 and keep gaming.